That always startles me every time. I don't know. <laughs> um, well, great. Uh, uh, so um, I'm actually talking to you from uh, South Dakota today. I'm, I'm in uh, Huron. Don't call it urine is what our herein, don't call it urine. That's the, the joke everybody who's not from here has told me to say, I have not tried that here. Um, and um, uh, the, I'm finishing up my, uh, spending the morning in the early afternoon uh, with, with folks here. And um, so I'll go right from here and then meet and have lunch with um, employment seeker we're working with and customize employment. Um, I do wanna say, um, if you don't mind, the, the, if any of you, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, having a hard time, um, can't really tell by looking you know, who's who's in which of my cut of the customized employment rounds but if you are in the round four and I, I sent you an email late last week and I just sent a reminder email I'm trying to um, organize a trip to come out uh, the, the week that we were going to do this CIE acre training so that's the week of um, Monday August 2nd but I know I, I met with Bernie for breakfast two day, yesterday or maybe yesterday or two days ago and I guess Sturgeon is happening around that time um, so we're trying to figure out if that'll be possible and how that'll work. So um, flights were great, but uh, rental cars costs, uh, I got a deal, luckily, a manager special for like 100 bucks a day. You know? <laughs> the next one was uh, 200 bucks a day. And uh, usually what happens, I show up and it's usually the smallest compact car and I'm kind of tall. And usually the, uh, the worker there, it takes pity on me and, and will give me like a bump up for free just because they, they don't know how to fit into the car. But um, so cool. And then uh, for those of you that are in any, and this is, this is not this project, but this is the CE part of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Jordan, that's what, uh, so I was thinking I could stay a couple hours away and drive in. I don't know. Um, but even Bernie was like that probably even won't work. Um, or I could be like Bernie and I could camp or something. So, um, but um, uh, those of you that are in round on my to-do list, the folks that are in round one and two of the CE project, I, I am going to be reaching out to you soon. So I'd like to come hang out with you a bit. So but this has been fun. Uh, you know, I live in a rural state and, um, you know, it's about a 10 hour, maybe, or maybe eight hour kind of loop. If I, I flew into um, Sioux Falls, then you go to Watertown, Aberdeen. Uh, yesterday was um, Pier, and then today here in, and then I'll, I'll drive to, to uh, Sioux Falls. So gorgeous, gorgeous area here. Um, Cool. So today we're today is an interesting topic, and and so you know um, last the last um, COP I had like probably like fifteen or sixteen slides, which is way too many slides uh, for a one hour thing. And and today um, we're going to talk about um, uh, communicate. Well, the, the topic is communication skills or building communication skills. Um, I think I don't know if it was said for interviewing or um, sorry. Um, yeah, for interviews. Uh, so um, that's an interesting uh, topic, and so I, I had some some thoughts about that and and, and experiences. Uh, but if you if if um, if Jordan sent the slides already to you, you'll see there's just there's really just three slides in, in the the title slide. Um, but you know the COP the community practice. And I'm going to pull up the pull up the um, slides here. So the community practice um, is really meant to like have a discussion about, about this stuff. Uh, it, it really is meant um, to be less of kind of one directional, this part of it, or one directional um, kind of, you know, instructor led teaching and more of a, you know, like, like some of that, but then also um, sharing, uh, you know, what's happening. Um, and, and just, you know, getting here and I'll be spending time with people as a part of, you know, we're talking about customized employment. That was the in, that's why I'm here, but we're also looking and pulling in the community, you know, other services as well. It's, it's really interesting, I think, to see, you know, you start seeing some of the, of the patterns, you know, some of the, some of the things that, um, that organizations are maybe, you know, that works well for them, you know, in each organization, you know, has different strengths and stuff they want to work on stuff that, that isn't working so well or stuff they want to develop, um, uh, and then, um, but there, there are some common things that, you, that you're seeing too, um, you know, stuff across, um, one, one seems like the need for, for growing a bit, you know, that there's, in certain areas, there's not tons of options for, for DRS um, uh, when, when they're thinking of uh, community integrated employment services. Um, uh, but some other stuff too that, that we'll talk to you when I, when I meet you and as we, as we go through uh, the project. But um, 
Well, one of the things that, that's interesting, you know, is, and, and, and I, you know, when we think of building communication skills for interviews, um, you know, I, do, I just think that, um, you know, I, I think it's, in, I think, you know, depending on what DRS is, is wanting, and obviously, um, you know, who, primarily guided by who the employment seeker is, I think that all of us, um, we, you know, we probably have a, a number of different um, approaches towards that. Um, and that's at the end, I'd like to ask you, you know, what, you know, what you're doing when you're helping people prepare for, for interviews. Um, now, the assumption of if you're doing, and again, um, we're not, I, the, the perspective mainly is, is what we think of as traditional job interviews. Um, the pers you know, it's not the informational interviews, which is, which is a bit different. Um, but, uh, but I, I'm just, you know, I, I'm talking to folks, um, you know, there's people are getting uh, um, referrals for employment services, uh, uh, placement, you know, if it's outside CE, um, uh, the CE approach would not use job interviews in traditional sense, in a traditional sense. Um, so, you know, I'm, I just think it's interesting when you, when you think about, um, I'm also talking, you know, people are doing some, some congregate kind of readiness training. Uh, I know that there was a um, the group that I'm with now, they were talking about doing some transportation um, kind of supports and training uh, that's, that's more of like, like uh, that's, that's housed with a class, I think, and then with, um, you know, in a, in a, um, a classroom. Um, but I just think it's, it's interesting, you know, when you meet somebody um, uh, of deciding, you know, well, in terms of, of building skills for interviews, you know, what is needed? What's, what's, um, what is the gap, the skill gap? Um, and then how do you, how do you um, provide support or training or teaching or fill, to fill that gap? So um, I'm interested, you know, in, when you're meeting with people, um, how, you, how you come up with that, right? Um, how you decide what, what how, you know, specific um, actions that we're going to do to help people um, do, uh, uh, try to build those skills. And, and I, I think it's complicated, you know, because um, as we'll see on the next slide, um, you know, I think we can, we can pretty much, um, you know, anticipate what, what a lot of the questions will be, um, especially, you know, if we have experience uh, with, with the business. So I think, you know, obviously deciding who the person is and then where they're going, uh, to do the interviews, I think it's interesting, right? Is it a business that we know? Uh, is it are they interviewing with somebody that we know? Um, you know, are, and we'll talk about next. Are we behind the scenes? In the next slide, you know, what's our role? Um, you know, I'm sure that some of you probably are doing um, where you're kind of co-interviewing. You know, not you're not you're not doing the interview, but you're there with the person. Even in the traditional, yeah, we do that in informational interviews and customized employment because it's information is being sought, not a job. Um, information and advice. But when a job's being, when it's, you know, we're interviewing for an open position using the more traditional placement approach, um, um, you know, I've definitely, I've done that in the past. Um, again, not a customized approach, but a, where, where you'll be with the person providing support um, uh, during the interview, you know, so I, I think there's a range of, of that, like behind the scenes, you know, some, some preparation, um, uh, for the interview, um, some effort towards skill building versus, um, you know, being there with a person and still doing preparation and, um, and, and skill building, but also have, being, being there in the supports. And, and it's, so it's interesting, you know, the pros and cons of both, right. Depending on the person, um, you know, familiarity with the, with the business and, um, you know, kind of what, how, how people are going to view that. Um, you know, the, the example I, I, I think I probably shared during the, I've shared a thousand times during the training, different trainings is just the, 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 the light bulb moment for me, you know, with, with interviewing of, of, of just the, how complicated it can be is um, a guy, Ty, that, that we were working with a project in Alberta. And I apologize if you heard this story before, but, um, you know, when, when we were deciding what, you know, what the next steps were for, for this employment project, um, you know, they were struggling with, with, with Ty in terms of like, mainly it was, it was like, he was one of those people that's like, how are you not working? You know, like what's going on? Like you're you're obviously brilliant, and something was happening. And he was doing they were doing the the interview. Uh, pre pre they had spent a lot of money, like thousands of dollars, Canadian, um, um, you know, doing interview prep and 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 that kind of stuff. Um, and so they had decided nothing was working, and they ended up deciding. Um, and I went with them because we were thinking about what we we're going to do. And they kind of knew the business owner a little bit, where they did this interview. And they decided they had he had gone on his own, but they decided we're going to go too and try to figure out what's going on. Um, and he's somebody that, you know, just from the outside and getting to know him a little bit uh, in your offices, you know, um, 
didn't seem like like kind of the silent you know partner approach to being in the behind the curtain um, kind of thing you know um, would work and um, and so then when we went there um, you know the first question that was asked and it was like a construction business he was he was interested in and in some of the stuff he had his grandpa was in construction in the military. He did some stuff around that. You know, he's an ex, a small ex, ex excavator and other stuff. He was good with, with that stuff. Um, it was a construction business. They did sewage and some uh, basement type construction in, in, in um, a town in Alberta. And um, and the, uh, the the first interview, the first question to him was was what are you good at? Um, and and again, if you've heard this, sorry, but and you know that that's kind of like the that's the softball, right? That's like the right the meatball down the um, down the uh, right down the middle that you crush out of the park, and they had worked on that over and over and over again, and um, and he you know they knew the answer they knew it he could he could give you that answer um, you know it, it was kind of scripted but he could give it to you like it wasn't scripted, um, and so but what we didn't know and we hadn't learned really we would learn later was that um, it was that at home he was probably nineteen or twenty. And he was having the um, he was having kind of the failure to launch problem. You know, his parents were kind of like, you know, you need to get out of the nest. Um, and he was struggling with that because he didn't have a job yet. Um, you know, he had his parents were paying for his car, and, and they were wanting to for him to, you know, they're ready for for what came next. And he was he, you know, and his thing was I'm an adult, and they're kind of you know uh, crowd me and all that stuff. So there was some headbutting, especially with him and his dad, where they would get into it a little bit, and and um, and uh, you know. Um, and they would butt heads and uh, they're strong personalities, that kind of stuff. And um, little, we didn't know this because um, he's somebody who, who didn't necessarily share a lot and, and like he wasn't very demonstrative sometimes, you know, pretty pretty deadpan in terms of his delivery. Um, and he was a pretty funny guy too, uh, had a pretty good sense of humor um, if, if you got it, you know, if you were kind of on his, on his wavelength. And, um, and so that, they, they gave him that, that question. Um, and again, I shared this story before, sorry, but and his response was, um, you know, to, to the question of um, what are you good at was his response was, uh, well, uh, according to my dad, nothing, you know, that was like, that was how he answered that question. That was the first question of, of the interview. Um, and he gave, he deadpanned it, you know, um, <laughs> it's like, like all, you know, um, that is, you know, a kind of awkward silence and, and blah, blah, blah. And, and, um, and so, you know, we were there, so we we're able to kind of salvage it a bit. Um, but, you know, he and he, I think he meant it as a joke, um, but he had had a battle with his dad in the morning. And so, um, you yeah, know, we would say that's probably information that, that the business um, doesn't need or doesn't want or doesn't care for. And why, why should they know that stuff? But so um, they had done tons of stuff preparing. He was very skilled, uh, um, you know, many ways. And, um, and just, you know, I think we found out as we kind of figured things out and unwound things that there's probably stuff like that was happening where maybe he was joking and people didn't quite get the joke. or Maybe he was, uh, had a bad day, you know, in terms of with his parents. And so perhaps some of that frustration, even if it's kind of um, unintentionally came through. Um, and so, you know, I, I just think that's kind of the first step of, of figuring this stuff out is, um, you know, is figuring out like what people need, you know, and what what's what would what supports would be most effective, and 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 so I think part of that, you know, trying to figure out how you do that, that's that's a little tricky, you know, um, you know, how much does a VR counselor know uh, when when making the referral? How well do you know the person? One thing I'm I'm definitely learning from being with different organizations is that um, you know there's kind of in-house and how out of house uh, referrals where. Um, organizations will often you know, work with people that they're working in other capacities, whether it's residential or um, you know enclave or, or uh, set aside programs or what, whatever. Um, and so they'll make a referral or, uh, to DRS, and then it'll come back to them. So and that person's kind of known, so you can you have some information pre-known. Again, you got to be careful with that because you know in one context, you know, and, and work is different. Um, and then, but then there's other where you get a referral for somebody that's not connected at all with your organization, you right? And so the VR counselor, the DRS counselor is deciding, you know, what services are, are appropriate or, or needed at that time and then asking for the vendor to, to do that thing. So um, anyway, I, I just think that, that um, you know, like Carrie says, is individualizes like every other word in the Rehab Act, you know? So even if, if it's identified that, that, you know, placement, straight on approach to the front door, um, we're gonna go through those HR processes. I just think it's, it's super important 
um, to do what's needed, right? Uh, not necessarily to send people through um, a program, uh, a curriculum of, of that necessarily, right? Of, of preparing for that, uh, just depends on the person. Um, and then, you know, the other part, the second bullet there um, is, uh, you know, I, I, I just think, I think that's one of the problems with, with traditional interviewing is that, um, is that for a lot of us, that's not the best way to get to know us, you know? Um, and especially for, if, for folks who are, whose lives um, may look very different than, than how um, you know, that quote unquote typical life or ordinary life looks like in terms of uh, human services being involved, um, you know, interactions with other people. Um, so I just think we got, we want to think about that, about, um, you know, what are the, what's, what are the endearing qualities? What is the, the, the awesome stuff, you know, that, that, that people would want to be around? Um, and how do you, how do you, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of interviews are, are the interviewee, the, the employment seeker is, is responding to the questions um, that are, that are being asked um, by, uh, by the employment, by the, by the, um, the person, the HR person, whoever's doing the interview. So it's in a sense, like they control the, the interview. Hopefully they're asking like, do you have any questions or that kind of stuff? Um, but um, but I, I think, you know, that, that level of power, you know, maybe depending on the person, uh, people can, can not, I don't know, I'd say timid, but, but they just maybe don't feel like, like they're super in control, right? And so, so if, how do you show your best self, right? Uh, we, were, we met with somebody who, um, uh, you know, who, um, one of the employment seekers who is not happy if somebody doesn't say hi to them, you know? Um, and so for whatever reason, and so they were working on it. I think oh, it was really good. Like one of the things they talked about was, um, and I think folks were working on was, um, you know, to, to take a bit of control to help, help her learn that you know, somebody doesn't say hi to you. Maybe they're being a jerk, but perhaps they're just they're just busy in, in their own head, you know. Um, and so to to not and all of us can probably relate to feeling slighted or or somebody likes us likes somebody better than us or you say something and people don't or you know they include somebody else in the conversation, not you. Um, it, to teach the the skill of you know if there's somebody you want to say hi to um, and maybe they say hi to somebody you know maybe you can say hi to them, right? And that's very basic, a minor. Um, skill, but it's probably involves some uncomfortability, some risk, because what if the person really didn't want to say hi to you, you know? Um, but I, I think, some, you know, in a, in a more, um, I guess, formal context, when somebody's getting interviewed, I think, you know, teaching people, um, if, if interviewing, I think, is a mechanism for being known, I think it's a relationship, you know, obviously, introduction, they want to get to know who you are, um, and why they should hire you, right? So I think that it's tricky, um, uh, how do you how do you sh how you show how do you help the person show their best self, especially um, you know if um, I, I think well, well we'll talk about that in a second I think it's it is super important to to know what the you know the interviewee or interviewer is looking for right um, and I think sometimes that's like we're so focused on the person and building those skills that we we for maybe forget sometimes to, to help somebody do some research about what the business is you know um, and so. You know, if we're only looking for certain types of jobs, maybe we feel like, well, we know, you know, we know what they're looking for. But, you know, I think what you hear a lot when people are doing interviews um, is, is, you know, how do you how do you differentiate yourself? Like, how do you um, how do you help me as the interviewer understand uh, kind of um, you know how you are are different than the other applicants, right? Um, so I, I just think that's that you know that's important to, to think about when you're helping somebody. If it is a mechanism for being known. You know, well, how well is the employment seeker known? Um, you know, how, um, you know, because I think you, you can teach a lot of the, um, or you can try to teach, I think, a lot of the, the form or uh, of, of interviewing, you know, but if the content, right, you can teach somebody how to be, polite. Well, again, whether it's, you know, I think we could have a discussion about the effectiveness of traditional interview training, uh, the efficacy of it, the actual impact of it, which we can have a different conversation about that. And usefulness of it, um, uh, depending on how you're approaching it. But, um, but I think we can teach people like the form of it, like how to be polite a bit, you know, shake hands, smile, eye contact, all that stuff, which is awesome. Um, I think it's hard, like we'll talk about the next, if people don't, aren't having opportunities to practice those skills in, in their their day-to-day -day life. Um, but I, I think that, that the form is cool, but but if the if the if if the meat of of that if you know if the, if you can get all the the soft skills right um, as well as you can um, but then but then 
like you're not communicating, you know, the, the, like why am I a good worker potentially? Um, you know, I think that that can be, uh, that can cause problems. So I just think that, you know, obviously I think a lot of the soft skills is, is about, or a lot of the interview stuff is I think about this, the soft skills, and you know, the interpersonal interactions and stuff when, and that's important. Um, but but the, the actual content, um, you know, of what is being said and, and, and experiences and um, that the person can, um, can use as, as evidence and, and kind of as backup material for explaining uh, their answer, I think is, is important. Um, and then the other part, you know, I just think the second, the fourth bullet is just, um, you know, we were talking today with the group here and um, we, there, we were talking about one, um, you know, how, how a person kind of struggled learning a skill uh, in a class um, and it was, it was transportation, uh, like calling the bus and, and um, and scheduling the bus and stuff, um, and um, and the staff were great. Like they were, they were just, they were just explaining how, how the person maybe struggled a bit with that um, and is working on that. Um, but uh, but the they weren't actually taking the bus anywhere. You know, it was like it was a kind of a rote practice for learning how to do that. And the person kind of maybe wasn't assertive enough, or um, it didn't, you, you know, um, wasn't kind of asking the questions they probably needed to ask over time. Um, and the, and the staff are wonderful, you know, uh, working on, on that stuff and how, how maybe respond to that. But I think one of the things that, that I, I would suggest is, is kind of um, maybe problematic with that approach of, of learning, um, of teaching a skill separate from where the skill is going to be used, is just that I, I think from her perspective, it maybe just wasn't very functional, you know, that, that perhaps her performance would have changed um, if, uh, if she was taking the bus somewhere, you know, that she wanted to go as opposed to just like learning how to take the bus, but not quite sure how that tied into her day-to-day -day life. And so, um, so it's like, when we think of interviews, that's a pretty, um, you know, that interaction is pretty unique and pretty uncommon, I think, in general. It's not like if you, I think if you were to think about how much time have I spent doing interviews in my life, it's probably not tons, you know, um, they're, they're pretty episodic, pretty short relatively. Um, and uh, so, so I think that, that um, you know, thinking about, you know, how does a person practice when they're not with you? You know, how can people follow up on those skills? Um, uh, and again, it's, you know, if it's, it's having a dialogue, um, you know, question, response, follow up question, ask a question, you know, response, um, you know, the interpersonal stuff. Um, I think a lot of that, you know, if, if you're going to spend some time on that thinking, I think it is important. And again, I, one of the problems with this is that is that people that we're working with are often isolated and maybe there's not um, other people to help, you know, or you know, how often does the person talk to a stranger, you know, and, 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 and have a conversation or introduce themselves? Um, uh, what's expected of the person, you know, and, and there, so I think, I think some of the understanding, again, I'm not talking about discovery or the full blown stuff, but I think some of those concepts of person centered um, services are, are important because, um, you know, you, you can find ways that, that either what, what we're trying to, to learn, you know, can be reinforced when they're away from you, right? And you can create a plan around that um, and ask for help. Uh, or you, you could see how, you know, I just think for some, for some folks, like if, if it's like they, they're with you for an hour, you're working on something to prepare, and then there's like 40 or the rest of the week they're doing, they're not, you know, they're doing things that aren't, are gonna kind of undercut that. Then I, I just think the question is like, what is this useful? You know, if if um, the exposure to the practice of the skills is, is only gonna be in, in a, um, a uh, very controlled setting, a very predictable setting, um, versus how much can, can people kind of practice those skills in their day-to-day -day life and how can you get help from other people? So the example just is, um, again, somebody who's, and again, depending on, we're not, we don't have an employment seeker in mind, but um, you know, for, if we're wanting somebody to take initiative during an interview, um, and kind of ask the questions that are important to them. You identify those and, and, and help people figure out a plan for how they're gonna look for the important, you know, what do you want in a job? And how do you figure out if that, the job you're going for actually fits you? Like, what are those? Um, and we're trying to help them become more assertive and, 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 and go for things they want, you know, but then they go, go back to the group home where, you know, staff are, are pretty much doing things for them and, and there's not tons and tons expected of them. Um, and then maybe in their, their weekly or daily life, they're, they're in programmatic things where they're, they're not, there's not tons of discretionary effort and they don't have tons of influence on what's happening. I just think that, that we just need to think about, and that's an extreme example, right, of, of somebody whose life is completely um, 
dictated, I guess, by human services. But I just think, um, I, I, I think that, that that's an interesting kind of conundrum, you know, of, of um, you know, how much, if we, if we have limited exposure and time with somebody and we're working on this stuff and there's no way to have, um, uh, you know, to have other people kind of reinforce it or to practice it in different situations. It's just, I think, you know, we may want to think about, about the approach we're using. Um, um, and then, you know, the other, um, I think I kind of mentioned it in, in well, the kind of the opposite of, of what was happening, but, um, you know, there are some people that we're working with that are really good at, at, um, at, at interview. <laughs> they're really personable, you know, they're, I'm just super fun to be around and in short bursts, maybe, or, you know, when they're prepared, um, like all of us. Um, but, uh, so I, and you guys have probably worked with people who have, have had no trouble getting, they can get jobs, no problem even on their own without much support. But then like, but then what happens next is I, we've worked with a number of people and, and almost every project has like a handful of people like that. That's especially when we do discovery where they're like, why do I need you to do discovery? I can get a job whatever I want. And the follow-up question is, well, why aren't you working right now? You know, And then you, you go back and again, you wanna be a jerk, but you go back and, uh, and you see that the person gets the job, um, but then, you know, then it doesn't last very long. So, um, Again, again, thinking about who the person is, but that's an interesting thing too. Is like, is like, well, cool. Like, you're you're really good at like the, the getting people like you, and and um, but there's something going on with with you know as an interviewee. I mean, your job, the goal is not just to get a job offer, right? I think that's part of the of the shift in, in um, the shift in expectations and in, in effective services. Um, the goal the goal is to get a good job match, right? The good fit. Um, so I think, I think that's tough, right? I think that's part of the problem with interviewing in general. Those of us, we've all of us probably have had where we've had an interview. We thought the job was the was one thing, and then we get there and it's it's another thing, you know. Um, so I think that that's just tough in general. Um, that you know, that, so you get the you get the people to like you, um, you you do you kill the interview, but um, but you know you somehow you didn't do a good job, and it's not not that you're bad at it. It's just that. You know, some, it's hard to access information through conversation sometimes where, you know, the information you probably needed about the business, um, you, you either wasn't offered or, or you just didn't ask the right question or, you know, uh, didn't follow a, a line of logic through. Um, and so I, I think that's, an, you know, I, I just think it's important to think about that of, and hopefully when you're working with people about interviews, you know, um, you, you know, it's not just like we said earlier, not just answering the questions that we know are probably going to be asked or the question, um, you know, that, um, uh, that is, um, that, that are likely, but also making sure people have their questions, you know, they're, they're important, um, uh, uh, you know, you're interviewing the interviewer. <laughs> I think that that's, that's, it's really important for people to take that role, take that power, because, you know, when that happens, it just seems like something's um, something's missing there. And, and what I, I, a question I, I was taught by an HR person and it was one part of my reason why I went into more individualized services was because uh, I was with somebody that like, I think it's old Navy or something. Again, something I tell people all the time. Um, sorry, I saw the chat went off and I cannot see it right now. But Jordan, let me know if I'm missing a chat that I need to respond to. That was just me, Russell. Posting oh, cool. the attendance link. So you're awesome. Good. Awesome. Sorry. Um, what, an interview, an HR person had asked a great question, which was, and it was at an old Navy, and she said to the person, and I was there with with Kaylin, like doing a supporting interview, a long time ago, and um, and and the person asked Kaylin, like, why do you want to work here, you know, and, and it, that was like one of the later questions, um, like, why do you want to work here? And at the time, like the Gap was at the mall; it's not there anymore. Um, they're they're probably even now. There's probably like eight. Uh, kind of hipster clothing businesses kind of thing, you know, that young people like in old Navy is probably not hip anymore, but, um, and I remember that, that question really stumped us, you know, um, and, um, and I just did not do a good job of helping that person. Um, and again, that goes back to doing your research, um, you know, why, and I don't know that there was a good answer to that, you know, besides your hiring, or at least, there was a good answer. We just, I just, I hadn't, I hadn't helped Kaylin find that what that was to her. The, the right answer may have been, we, you're right, we shouldn't be here because I don't shop here. You know, I, she did shop there, but you know, I would, I should go to these other places. Um, so I, I just think that, that was, I think that's a brilliant, you know, way to get to the employment seeker 
uh, to get them to figure out what their questions are and you know, of, of why here, you know? And if the answer is because you're hiring, um, you know, uh, you know um, hopefully there's more than that. that. That's, we've talked a lot this week about, about you know, the, um, the needle in the haystack approach. That, that can work. You can find a needle in the haystack every once in a while, but you know, depending on the person and kind of the, what's happening, you know, the, odd, the, the odds are, can be kind of long, so. Um, the other thing with job interviews, um, and again, you know, thinking about how much we influence them and in, in our role, um, it's just, you know, human beings are, um, are just uh, unpredictable. You know, that's one of the beautiful things about us is that we are often illogical. Um, feelings drive things a lot. Um, and uh, and that's, that's, that's beautiful. That's what makes us who we are. Um, and, but things, there's often a lot of chaos. Um, and uh, you know the best amount of preparation um, you know may go a different a way that you didn't anticipate. So um, you know I, I just think that, that that when you're doing this stuff, helping people prepare, I just think it's important to understand that that because this is not our, this is not our space. This is when you're using that approach. This it's controlled by the business. That there are, there are just going to be natural limitations um, to how much we can influence you know and how much um, we can we can help. Um, and, uh, and often the response to that has been the next bullet, which is, you know, there's the, the behind the scenes approach, which, you know, the business never knows that we're involved, um, depending on, you know, again, who you're working with versus like the very involved in, you know, if you think of two, two ang area angles there, um, you know, uh, depending on, you know, who you're working with, where you're next to the person, you know, and, and, and you know, obviously the, the business is, knows about that. It's going to be cool. Um, but in terms of how, how we, um, you know, again, how how we can influence or and, and um, uh, um, persuade, I guess the the um, uh, the, the decision maker, right, and, and and jump in and or assist if needed, right. And that's that's tricky because you're with the when you're with the person. Obviously, there's a there's a going to be a presumption of incompetence of a potential stigma. Um, you know, just uh, one of the things we keep talking about um, in, in training and everywhere and here is just. Um, you know, the over-involvement of support, you know, that, that oftentimes, um, you know, we're doing things when it's not, not, not that clear that what we're doing is needed or necessary or even helpful. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think, again, depending on the approach, the person, the business you're talking to, the employer, um, I think that, uh, I think you gotta, I think it just depends, so. Cool, all right, um, so that's my spiel, about a half hour of that. And I just would like to hear what, what, what y'all are doing, so. Um, and please jump in. Um, and I'd like to, you know, I'm, I'm going to take a couple notes on my on, on my Word document here. Let me find it. Um, but I'm just curious, how is this? Is it something um, like how much time? One thing I've I've, I've learned in it everywhere is that oftentimes there's businesses that um, that the CRP has a relationship with. So um, something's being um, altered in the in the approach. Um, you know, we wouldn't say it's customized employment because we're going to a site that may not have anything to do uh, or even like highly individualized employment because, you know, why are you going there? Well, we, we have, we send people through there, right? Um, but but the, the, the amount of, the way that the business gets to know the person um, may be altered, you know, whether it's, um, it's not just sit down, maybe it's we show up and then check things out. Um, there's some kind of conversation happening, but um, I guess I'm just, I'm curious, um, like what, and just jump in, like how, like if, let's say, you know, what percent of your, how often, I guess, are you using, um, uh, you, you, are you interacting with people in ways that you're trying to help them with their communication, help them with, with skills related to interviewing? You know, or, or, um, that, like, are you doing that, um, you know, a, a, a what percent of your time? And then, and then are you using like a curriculum on that? Um, like that's what the first bullet is like, are you using some kind of planned approach where you have, okay, let's print out the, uh, the goals we're working on. And, and here's the, here's the questions we're going to go over. Or how's that, how's that working? Jordan, did we, uh, did we say that the, the gift cards going to people you have to talk to be in, into the, um, the drawing, the drawing. There's a drawing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, just for those who weren't here last time, we are doing a gift card drawing um, for those that fill out the attendance sheet. Um, 
the last time it'll just be whoever filled out the appendix sheet because we did not clarify who will actually be on the list. Um, but yeah, we're, we're drawing for an Amazon gift card just as a, a little, uh, I don't know, incentive, I guess, which I don't like to use it that way, but just a little bonus for you guys for attending the trainings and participating in the trainings with us. But it was brought up last time that we should probably uh, include those and a little more incentive for those that do turn their cameras on and participate in the conversation. So, <laughs> that was not us. Um, I don't that know was somebody. Track that, yeah. But, yeah. One of you guys had that idea, which is a great idea. Um, so anyway, I don't, yeah, I don't like, I don't want to coerce you into talking, but um, right. right now, right now, I think it's, you have to have your camera on at least a bit. That's how you get in the drawing. But um, so I'm, uh, anyway, so I was just curious, like, I, 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 could a couple of you describe what you're doing around that? Like help people prepare for interviews? I was and, actually going to respond before I heard there was a prize, but now oh, that no, now you feel, prize at stake. yeah. <laughs> um, I do mock interviewing sometimes between, we have multiple offices. So sometimes we will do a mock phone interview with someone in a different office so that it's somebody new. Always, I have a list of open-ended questions that I ask from my previous HR experience so that they have to talk. Um, and before that, we do research on the companies that they're gonna um, go work at because I explained to them that maybe they won't even want to work there after they do the research on the company. So let's do it first and just see um, what it's like. But we do mock interviews for those that we think need it. Um, I just requested um, being able to do that for one, somebody that's coming up. So I, I think that's a good thing to do. Right. And would that um, would that be um, the funding category be employment supports or employment services or how would like under DRS? It depends. How would, it's okay. job placement. Sometimes okay. it's job placement if we have those hours. Okay. Um, but if we don't have job placement hours, they might put it under employment services. I don't know if that's that's what they do anyway. Yeah, it works. Cool. Um, how do you like, um, and, okay, and, that, and that's the other thing, I, I'm sorry, I just kind of skipped right over COVID, but um, are, are, right now, are most interviews happening? Um, are, are they back to in-person or are they, are they happening by phone or, or did, they, did they go away from in-person for a while? Mm -hmm. Or yet yeah, they did go away from in-person? A few employers did, okay. but most but not, were in-person. Back now, okay, cool. Um, and so you said you'll, you'll pull in um, a stranger, somebody they don't know. Well, it's not a stranger to me, but somebody in yeah, one yeah. of our other offices, one of the other um, job coaches or somebody that we have to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, do free they, we'll trade off. Cool. So it's, so it's that, I mean, they're, sorry. So they get that fear factor over with too, because yeah. it's somebody new. Yep. Yeah. So a stranger to them. I mean, but not, yep. they know that it's not, it's not like they know they're safe, a safe person because they're a colleague yeah. of yours, but, but they don't yeah. like the interaction style they, they wouldn't be used to. Um, cool. Um, and there's, there's one question that I always coach them on. And it's, um, if somebody asks you how to do something that you don't really know how to do, how, what are you going to say? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I haven't done that exactly, but I am willing to learn. Mm -hmm. but that's one thing that I just over and over so that they're not, um, saying I have no idea. Yeah. Cool. And uh, yeah. Um, and and um, people, how does that go? Like getting people that point across? It depends on the person, I'm, I'm sure. Um, but so will you, um, you'll, you'll intentionally ask questions about things you know that they have no experience with just then to help them with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. I ask them pretty tough questions because I want them to be ready. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to fail at their interview. Yeah. Um, and then you're, so you said the, 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 the approach you're using is based on um, what you've done when you were in HR. Yeah. Is that correct? Like the, yeah. the questions you're going over. And over. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, when you're doing, when you're helping a person do research on companies, um, what, are, what are the methods you're using for that? If you don't mind me asking. We do Google, mm -hmm. just Google search, or we will go out to the website for the company. We'll look on Facebook for the company. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because sometimes um, people will put comments about the company mm -hmm. that are on Google. And if it has a lot of negative mm -hmm. things on there, and I know most of the companies here, but if they're, you know, if that is somewhere that I think they might not be successful at, um, then I kind of steer them to another employer. Okay, cool. Um, and sorry, I just realized that the, um, the subtitle on this is not right. I, I write it on the one I did previously, so I apologize that so Jordan, I can send you a, a better a fixed one there in case it confuses people. Um, cool, and then do you, do you work with people to come up with questions that they wanna ask? Or do you find that, that I always found, again, I'm not an expert oh. in that that was something that I, when I interviewed people, when I was in that role, I really enjoyed it. You know, and I think if you look at data, it shows like businesses wanna know that you've done the research and you have questions, you know? No, they usually don't have any questions they wanna ask. I work with yeah. them to make up some questions yeah. that they have yeah. to ask that aren't like, how much will I make? What yeah, are yeah. my hours? I, I want them to ask questions like, why do you like working here? Yeah. yeah. You know, what, what do you see the benefits are of working here? Things like that, that are. Yeah. They're a bit more uh, detailed or mm -hmm. uh, in, in, uh, inquisitive than what, what do I, when do right. I start? What's my pick? Right. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, awesome. Um, and then um, do you, uh, I guess, could I ask somebody else? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, would somebody else like to share or could I ask somebody else to share? Um, here in Yankton, we have a couple of our job developers that are on um, that teach an employ a weekly employment class. We call it Upgrade. And um, it's kind of a soft skills curriculum. And then half the class, they're in class, they're reviewing um, you know, the curriculum for the week. And then they go out um, to different businesses in Yankton for the second half of the class. And you know, it's done a number of different ways. Either they, they do tours um, or they you know, will call um, and talk to a business person in town so that when the when they go in, you know that business person is interacting with them, talking to them, you know, trying to get them to um, interact and kind of work on, you know, their social skills and um, how to interact appropriately when they meet new people. And then um, toward the end of the class, then we try to do you know mock interviews with. Um, business owners in Yankton. And so that's a whole structured, uh, how long does that last usually? That whole, the whole well, process? It, um, it kind of depends on the group. You know, we, we usually try to have like four people in a class and um, we're trying to keep them to like eight weeks, depending mm -hmm. on the group. Okay. And what do you call that class? Well, we call it Upgrade, which is um, a curriculum that we purchased. Okay. However, we don't, we just kind of use that as a guide, you know, because uh -huh. we've really, um, the two gals that teach it, they're actually on here, um, you know, have geared it toward the people that we work with. Uh -huh. It's a, um, um, a high school transition curriculum. Okay. We have... Um, we have curriculum that the state put out too that's called Bring Your A Game to Work uh -huh. that, that does the, that's free, that does the soft skills. Yeah, it's, it's really similar to, um, to Bring Your A Game. It just has some different kind of tools to use during the class. What, um, what do you think um, are, the, are the most useful tools, if you don't mind me asking? What are the... I'll let Jane and Heather answer that. They're the Perfect. ones that teach the class. Perfect. <laughs> All right, I'll go. Put, so, I'll, I'm putting them on the spot. Yeah. Hey. Well, hey. If they, if they want to be in the, if they want to be in the, the drawing, so they got to talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's do this. <laughs> so, upgrade focuses on like we call them the five bubbles of soft skills. You know, responsibility, reliability 
kind of a lot of things that employers now, that's like, that's awesome if their employer has just that because they'll teach you all those hard skills. They need people to show up. So then we, you know, we go into detail on what those things are. And then like under each soft skill, there's vocab words for the week. So like respect and accountability. And so then we can go into the businesses when we tour and then we can um, depending on the group, of course, okay, look for somebody who um, is reliable or teamwork or, you know, we can kind of take those into real businesses that they could work at. So then it's not just class time where a lot of us kind of zone out. Right. We also have done um, role playing. So we kind of talk about the importance of when you pick up an application or drop off an application, um, you know, what is it important to look a certain way and to have good hygiene? And so, for example, I came in with messy hair and sweatpants and a oversized t-shirt and Heather um, was dressed really nice and looked good for the day. And I walked in and I just said, oh, I just picked up an application. And when I'm done with class today, I'm going to go drop it off. And and I put my feet up on the on the desk and sat back and, you know, just was very inappropriate. And so then we talked to them later on and and asked, you know, do you see anything, you know, wrong with the situation? Is, does Jane look all right going? Because then Heather chimed in and said, oh, I picked up an application, too. And so we do a lot of that role playing, too, and and uh, and then talk about stuff, you know, things like that. And when we go into the businesses, we'll, you know, talk to them and say, um, how do you, how do you feel? Did you see any teamwork today? Did you see, you know, anybody, did anybody approach us and ask us for help? And, you know, cause you'll, you'll go into a big, say like a Walmart and you're not going to get people to come right up to you and ask you if you need any help. And so we'll go through there and then we'll discuss that. And then we'll go into a smaller business and right away they're, you know, talking to us and saying, how are you doing today? And can I help you find anything? And, and uh, so it, it, it's more help, like a hands-on learning, I feel. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then, uh, so then like, as I go through it, then there's a point when it's like, okay, you're going to go, you have, you have businesses employers who are willing to do kind of mock interviews is that what you, is that how I understand that in the past we've had uh, voc rehab counselors okay. that they uh, some knew some didn't know um, come and do them and this round we have a couple of businesses that we're going to ask them and then we'll have to see what works for their schedule whether they come out to the center or if they can do it on site so that'll determine be determined by each business owner okay cool um and then what what is that what how do you and is that typically drs will fund that fund those um uh, like they'll fund, fund a class depending we have a lot of people that we support mm -hmm. within abs so it really depends on you know sometimes the school district that's just something that would have to be discussed but usually we've had in-house people so it's just an hcbs okay. Covered. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. primarily HCBS through either our day services or our career exploration gotcha. services. Yeah, and then those people usually have a supported employment staff that they're working with. So then we try to document and then share that information. So then it coincides with what they're doing one on one with their supported employment staff. Right. Okay. Um, so quick question about like my observation, and again, I don't know if it's true, but that, um, that sometimes what we're wanting people to learn is counteracted by how their lives are being lived. Like in terms of initiative, responsibility, like you just said the five bubbles of soft skills that, that um, you know, how, how long is the class? Each class is, you said eight weeks, but how long is each, um, how, is it five days a week for eight weeks? No, or? it's once a week and it's an hour to, however long it takes for a business tour. 
and depending on the group, sometimes you have to revisit things more than once. Yeah. So it could be longer. So we really don't, you know, we have an ish time, like Jill yeah. said, but then, you know, you custom create it. And like you had said earlier, and we talk about that here, you can teach them this much like responsibility and all of that. But then, yeah, when they go home, how do we connect that to other circles in their life? Right. I, I, that, I found that that is like a major dilemma. Mm -hmm. Like they, we're sometimes talking about concepts that are, they, who's going to disagree with that, you know, but then like we were talking, like you go home and if I had somebody who could who would cook my meal all the time, like cool, <laughs> you know, or like, um, and it's just those expectations just sometimes don't exist in other parts of the person's life. And a one hour, I, I just think for any human being, a one hour exposure to a skill a week or two hours, even more, if it's being undone, you know, by like a counter narrative or a counter experience that's it's pretty tough so are you are you guys coordinating that with like residential staff or in we've been you know, talking about yeah, yeah putting kind of things in place yep yeah yeah cool. cool i'm sure you guys do this too but like when i teach the classes that i do i i talk about you can use this for work and you can use it for your personal life yeah whether it's your spouse a partner a friend and so we talk about both. We don't just talk about work situations. We talk about home situations. And I think that helps tie it in too. Yeah. So that there, it's not just for work, you know, because if they really don't want to work, they're not going to listen anyway. But if they think that maybe I can use it in life, then maybe they'll listen. Yeah. Well, what I found is that there's, there's sometimes like when you're having conversations, there's just a lot of like, I don't know, you know, like, like there's a lot of just not, sometimes people just don't have a lot of experiences to, um, to use, you know, to, when you're, even when you're saying like, well, you know, what would you prefer to do? Like, if you're talking about responsibility and, and like, why is that, like, why should, you know, why is it worth it? You know, to, why should you stick with it? Hang in there, you know, to, to learn some of this stuff. Like, what are you benefiting? Like how, and that sometimes there's not a clear, you know, just like with, with we were talking about like with the bus thing it's like like why would why am i learning this you know i think even if somebody can't articulate that or they communicate differently i just think probably somewhere i'm, I'm certain of it that they're saying like what's the point of this you know if i'm not going to take the bus to go to a movie or to do something i want to do you know and so i think that's really important i think that's hard too because sometimes in our employment services we're not necessarily connected with you know if it's mom and dad or they live on their own sometimes if people are isolated too it can be hard for them to to find places to practice that, you know, um, if, I guess if you're, if you're, if residential supports are in your own organization, then yeah, coordinating that, but still tough. Yeah. It's still tough, a tough thing. Um, with it, when people are doing interviews, are, are people typically like, um, people go through that class or they, you, you will probably serve them in employment later, like after that, or at some point. Yeah. And usually okay. with interviews, I was about to type that earlier. Um, sometimes we've used cheat sheet cards on like employment info or things that maybe they'll know but when you're on the spot you forget all of that so yeah. we've done that depending on the person um and it helps if we have a relationship with the business so then uh there was a news article on um i believe they focused on people with autism the first 30 seconds you meet them are their worst but in an interview, the first 30 seconds are usually the most important. Right. Um, so it's definitely nice to be, have that working relationship with that business. So then it's like, okay, a disclaimer kind of, this isn't gonna be their best view or, yeah. yeah, but usually they have somebody in supported employment to help them through that process. Would somebody, do you think, is, or it just depends, will somebody be at the interview, be actually sitting there with the person? Does that happen sometimes? It depends, or? yes, it depends. depends on the individual and the business. Um, some businesses are like, no, we'll do it ourselves. Um, right. Some people are fine. It really is individualized. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, awesome, well, we, about five minutes left. Um, I'm just curious. So that's, so that's pretty cool. To describe. So I'm curious. I always am interested in like, have you found, I think a fun thing to talk about is because there been stuff that you, towards this that you've used in the past that you found does not work, you know? And so that you've been like, we're going to put that down. And I think that can really help like all of us that 
if you've learned that you know this thing is really not that helpful, you know, put that down, and then then other people don't need to go through the trial and error. You know, people learn from your. It's you know I, I like there's a saying that Carrie, my boss, always says like he would say um, you know people always say you learn from your mistakes, and that's great advice, but better advice is to learn from other people's mistakes. You know, so you don't have to make those mistakes. Um, so I'm just curious if does anybody have stuff that that they've that they've there's over time are like you know that doesn't quite make any sense and that they related to this and that they put down and so you could advise other people you know of course like make your own decisions but but in our experience you know this is something that probably isn't you don't want to do does that make sense anybody have anything like that they can think of or anything right now that you're you're kind of like thinking like oh, this isn't working like we want we thought it would or we're struggling with this piece of it well, I'll talk. It's, uh, and we've done this kind of over over the years with the employment classes, and it's looked different. But we do a, we call it a pre-test and a post-test. And it's more so, we explain it more so not to gauge what they know, but to gauge um, how well we are presenting it and what we need to change. And we've really had to tweak depending on the individual, you can't have them sit down and read a test and fill everything out. It's going to be all I don't know. So sometimes it has to be, you have to observe that skill or talk with, especially for the post test to talk with maybe their supported employment staff. And so then through um, observing them, you know that yes, okay, they know what this is or whatever. So we've really Kind of had to brainstorm how do we track that these are actually working in our productive classes cool so um like getting information from individuals about how they feel about if it's working for them it's it's probably going to be more than a you know good or bad you <laughs> know you know you're going to maybe find new, more nuance or more different perspectives like you said like being with people um doing some stuff and, and I, I i do think it's it is i mean i you know the way to get out of just the classroom setting, obviously, and then to get more towards experiential learning, um, you know, is I think super, super helpful. So cool. Anybody else want to, we got like two minutes left. Want to add anything? Yeah, I'll jump in on that one. Um, cool. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, I struggle the most with companies that have the online personality testing thing, yeah. you know, like, what would you do if something got stolen? Would you tell on your coworker or not? You know, that stuff. Yeah, no. So I try to avoid those at all yeah. costs. But um, we have a great company here that works um, with our people, wonderful. And, but if we can't get through that test, then it red flags the application on the computer. And he says, there's nothing I can do, even though I'm the manager. So. For, like nine, for like 90 days or? Yeah, you know, there's a period of time where it gets flagged yeah. and you can apply. Yeah, we used to, I, and I don't know if this is cheating, but I used to, when I did that, I would just do them for the people. <laughs> like, this is stupid. Right. Um, and then, you know, the questions, they ask the same questions like five different ways. Mm -hmm. And like, and that part of me is like, I don't want to, I'm not going to be a rat, you know, even though you know that, you know, you have to kind of be dishonest. It's weird. Like, that's a really good, I think, I think, uh, litmus test for like what work is like is that like your business wants a, a clear answer, but the, you know, but some of it is, is inauthentic and not even true. You know what I mean? Like, I just, yeah, I, we, I would just do them. <laughs> yeah, that's well, that's gonna, bad. I even yeah. struggle with them sometimes. So yeah, I know, totally. I'm going to do it as a team in the office here and then yeah. write down answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's I think true. a lot of them, you, it's kind of reading tea leaves to try to figure out, like, what do they really want, you know? And that's, yeah, yeah. But that's we have a great relationship with the employer. And if, the corporation didn't require that, it would be like an immediate hire situation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, Does everybody, I, I mean, had. yeah. Does anybody else do that? Or I mean, I hope I'm not, um, where you just sort of like, uh, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> we, I don't know if they see the results. I think it's just like a flag or no flag, you know? I don't know if they're actually getting evaluated on that. When I've helped people with that, it's, you know, they'll say, I'm going to do this and go, okay but what should you maybe do? And then, you know, we kind of <laughs> just talk through, okay, what should you do? Okay, and then we get through it that way. But they're yeah. tricky. 
Yeah, they are. Cool. Okay, well, it's one o'clock. Um, I appreciate your your uh, time and attention and um, and and participation and, and to see your face is awesome. I just it helps me not feel disembodied. Um, uh, so I really appreciate it. And Jordan will send out the the gift card eventually. Yes, I just followed up with Shana, who's uh, my staff that's helping me with that stuff. And awesome. I'm checking when we're doing it so that I remember to do it. <laughs> cool. I will send that out awesome. to the person that receives it. But okay. um, just quick so that it's on the recording, the code word for nice. attendance today is independence for July. So. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. Oh, and I did we say, um, have you sent out, we we're planning on shortening, I think, the, the training from two hours to an hour and a half. I don't know if you had shared that, Jordan, but uh, we got some feedback that people would, would want that to be a bit shorter. We're gonna I hadn't, to... just because okay. I, I kind of what my plan was, and I'll share it with these guys that are on here, is um, we are going to shorten the, the Monday trainings um, to an hour and a half instead of two hours. That was just some feedback that we had gotten during the um, survey that I sent out was that two hours is a little long. So um, we're gonna go ahead and sh um, shorten that to an hour and a half. And I'll just announce that Russell, just so that you know, um, during each training, just because we okay. don't know who's gonna be there from time to time, I wanna make sure that everybody knows. So I'll just announce that for the next couple. Great. Training. So, yeah, so we'll see, we'll see how that goes for a little bit. What, what training is that? That's the monthly Monday afternoon trainings. Is that the provider? Training? The monthly provider trainings okay. that are associated oh. with these. Yep. Okay. Yeah, fourth fourth yep. Monday. And you send us an email, right, about it? I have not sent an email about it. No, I was going to just announce that the trainings are going to be a little shorter. But there was no. an email at one point that sent out a schedule, right? For the trainings? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yep. I haven't updated. Okay. I have not updated the schedule that's on the website. Yeah. But I will. Cool. All right. Well, have a uh, have a good. Um, it's pretty warm out here, huh? I guess so. Be careful. Be careful and and have fun. The the fishermen aren't happy. The fish are low. They say the guys at my hotel. They're too low. So. All right. See everybody. Bye. Thanks, Jordan.